We'd like to take a moment to thank our friends at Hester and Cook for sponsoring this podcast. Hester and Cook believes there's always a moment to celebrate, and we could not agree more. They make the most beautiful tablescapes for your holiday hosting, all from paper. Yep, you got to see it to believe it. So stop by their stores around Nashville and Franklin or shop online for the season's best holiday decor, gifts, and specialty tabletop items. Use promo code MAGNOLIA for 15% off your first purchase in store or online at hesterncook.com. It's sweater weather and soup season, y'all. Laura Beth here to tell you about Zoop. Z-O-U-P. Zoop broths bring flavor to southern staples like really great grits, while their soups provide a comforting meal. Zoop is available at your favorite retailers across the country, including Instacart and online at walmart.com. For you Amazon shoppers, use promo code 20 Magnolias. 20 Magnolias to get 20% off your first purchase on Amazon. Learn more at zoopbroth.com. And now, on with the show. It's the season finale to season five. We are here at the table and we are so excited to talk to you guys about some of the milestones from this year, some of the highlights, wonderful things that we're looking forward to for Christmas, and some of the things that we've been doing this month. So, Without further ado, come on, y'all. Meet us at the table. I'm Lainey. And I'm Laura Beth. And we are Steel Magnolias. The strength of steel with the grace of a magnolia. We are here to have uplifting conversations about life in the South. And we've got plenty of room at our table. So pull up a chair. Ding dong merrily on high. I'm not going to sing the song. (laughs) Well, it was in our Advent study. And when I saw the words written out, you know what it reminded me of? Little Little Women. Women. I love that movie. Do you watch it often? Um, I I I haven't this year. I don't mean often, but like, do you watch it like every... Oh, if I see that... Once a year or once every two years or something. And I have to tell you... I like every version, but I just adore Susan Sarandon, Winona Ryder version. Oh, I know. Version. I know. And I hate Amy. I'm sorry. Kirsten Dunst was easy to hate. And so easy She to was hate. Amy. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. I don't, she was you, that's a strong Amy. word. Yeah, I know. I that's do. harsh. This I is do. our Christmas episode. Really not we like probably her. shouldn't start with people we don't but like. But I got an amazing compliment this week. What? Um... A massage client came out of the massage room, and I had the doors open, and so she could see my living room. Yeah, and I that was kind of intentional because I wanted her to, I wanted people to see the Christmas Christmas tree. trees right there. Yeah, but they don't always see that or pay attention to the living room. And she she came in and went, "Oh my gosh, this looks like where Little Women no way would be this room." And I was like, Aww. "That's a compliment." <laughs> Wow. There's no piano or anything. I don't know what made her feel that. The warmth. And I hope that it was It's warmth. funny because it doesn't look Victorian in the way that your decor is. There you is know, like. There's a fireplace, but it wasn't going. That's sweet, though. Oh, my Unless, gosh. Maybe it was on her it mind, my too. Day. Well, that's a good one. I would love to watch again soon because I haven't seen it in a long time. Let's watch that on Wednesday night. <laughs> you don't want to watch White Christmas? No, I do. Okay. I do. We're watching White Christmas we sometimes see it at the Franklin Theater, but they're not they playing didn't it much. They give us hardly any options. I haven't watched It's a Wonderful Life yet, but I will. I haven't watched. I've watched, like, the silly ones. I've watched Elf and Home Alone. And I watched Home Alone Christmas Vacation. Christmas Vacation was on just a little bit in the background while I was doing other things. Well, I but. enjoyed watching that, but I did fall asleep. Because, you know, I mean, I know it. So. Yeah, yeah. No, we all know I wasn't it. on the edge of my seat <laughs> yeah. wondering what's going to happen. I know. At, at this point, all of those that I just named, I just kind of have on the back, in the background. Just Oh, I sit on the edge of my seat with It's a Wonderful Life every single year. I adore George Bailey. I feel like I'm like a female version of him in some ways, mm-hmm. in a lot of ways, actually. Um, but there's just so much goodness in that movie. And have you ever seen it in color? Have we talked about this? Yeah, it's not right. 
You've seen it in color? <laughs> I've never watched it in color. But I think they have it in color. I think right? I have. Or maybe I've just seen the movie poster in color. I don't know. I don't know but. if I'm remembering that correctly. I feel like they colorized it, but I've never seen it if they have. So maybe it is just the poster. Did you have any other um, Christmas books or Christmas entertainment of any kind that you're you have done or you're I've wanting done very to do? little Christmas focused things yeah. um I don't ever have many Christmas parties yeah and I have only had one we went to together that's called the favorite things party which we yes. should talk about that for a yes. minute again um that's been my only Christmas party mm-hmm. and um yeah I don't I haven't been to any Christmas shows yeah I want to take Jacob to the Nutcracker when he's big enough because mm-hmm. that's fun I love that music I love Nutcrackers mm-hmm. it's just mm-hmm. I think that would be fun to do together yeah but I had my girlfriends college girlfriends weekend this weekend but only two of the four could be there yeah so and usually I'll do it here around Dickens Festival yes. Charles Dickens Festival a few times we've done it elsewhere but most yeah. of the time it's been here but we were at in Kentucky this year yeah in Elizabethtown so it was good to see Laura and Jim, mm-hmm. her Kentucky. husband. Yeah. Yeah, I did go to a cool show, but it just wasn't at all Christmas related. Oh, are you so going to talk about this? I can talk about that now, or we can talk about favorite things now. Well, either, either one, because I they're your stories, so. Well, favorite Whichever things. Whichever one you want to start with. We've mentioned on this podcast before, but that is a party where a friend of mine invites a lot of her group of friends and I usually only know the host and three other people including Laura Beth yeah so, so you're this is the second year yeah you got this invited. is her second year to do it she's been invited to oh, a different last one. year was the first year she had done it it's the first year she's ever hosted one she was really good at hosting I didn't think that so she had attended one that had gotten so big that she felt off. like she needed to split off okay so that's what happened okay and I got so. invited, but I was too sick to go because I've been sick since November 2nd. So I've been pressing through. I could not record last Sunday. There's no way she could have recorded. Y'all it wouldn't have been fun. It post. wouldn't have sounded good. Yeah, I'm not even sure the last four episodes have sounded okay, but I've <laughs> pressed th- through and done my best to at least get something on the airwaves. Okay. That's so how much we love you all. The story is, though, you have a limit on what you're supposed to spend. $25? 20 to 25 yeah. But you got to buy, buy three of them. Right. Three of the same So it's a pricey. Thing. I mean, yeah, I, money's relative for somebody yeah. that's one stocking stuffer. Yeah. Anyhow, you bring three $25 items. All the same thing. Yeah. Something that's one of your favorite Your favorite things. things. And then you go home with three different favorite things mm-hmm. of someone else. Mm-hmm. And it's not Dirty Santa style. There's no right. stealing. No stealing. But you're literally just picking three packages from under the tree, not knowing at all what you're getting. Yeah. So I pl- I actually got to pick six this year because I played four Laura Beth. That's true. That's true. So that was fun. I've had a win. This is a complete stranger to me, too. But now I've memorized her name on a lady that attends so don't think if i go next year i'm You're not gonna looking be for her down her packet what package she brings in because i, I happen to get her the first time and then you i happen to one. have picked her the second time and they've both been my favorite things <gasps> of the favorite things okay so i might be following her in okay well <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta know who it is later but um it's a cool so what did you bring party. as your favorite thing so i brought from drift.com Yes. A air freshener for your car with three months supply of air fresheners. These aren't air, just air fresheners that you would think of, like paper that you hang from your mirror. These yeah, are it's classy. a wood block yes. that fits on a magnet on your visor. And I just, because I got myself a three month several yeah. months ago and I don't have any more. Yeah. So I just put essential oils, you know me. Well, th- on Did that. they say that that's okay to do or did you no. just come up with that? Cuz they probably want you to buy their scent. They want you so. to get. Yeah. In, in fact, it's actually a monthly like you can subscribe where it just comes each month. Well, I've been stretching mine out since you gave them to me October 26th. <laughs> so I day. put essential oils for the first time on one and I let it sit so the wood would kind of soak it in. Okay. Cuz at first it's all just sitting on there, yeah. the drops. Yeah. So it soaked in. 
And it's nice. I'm yeah. not going to say it's as good as when I first opened one. Yeah. And it's wonderful. Yeah. But it's it's good. So when they get to the number that you are in the order that presents get brought in, you're assigned a number. So the people that per- picked up your gift start to open it and you tell the group about it. What it is. Right? Exactly. Isn't that how they did it? That's okay. right. So you told everybody about that. And, hopefully and they so with it. your three, I did not open them. I just watched the other people. Mm-hmm. So I knew what you were getting. Yeah. Yeah. But somebody was like, well, technically you could open all of them and then give her the one, the ones you least like. And I was like, I can't. I can't do it like that. I just can't. I'll be like, mine are kind of dinky. That's but it's weird that you got all really good ones. I think they're all good. No, they were all good. Well, I sent with you um, my lazy sort of sleep routine because I love to sleep and I'm pretty lazy at night in terms of getting my face washed the right way and all You've that. You've gotten the boy clean and now you're just So like... I sent my favorite makeup, re- eye makeup and facial makeup remover pads from Neutrogena and then my favorite scent to spray, like linen spray from 1818 Farms, which I met Count your through sheep. this podcast. What a cute name. Count your sheep. Yeah. So I met 1818 Farms through this podcast. We interviewed her like two years ago, and I still love the linen spray. And then I just put a little headband with it, too. Well, one of the things you got from your favorite thing, one of yeah. the things you received, was some Buff City laundry detergent. Yes. And was it in the scent... Narcissist. Narcissist. Yeah. Okay. And you were looking on their site and you were like, ooh, I bet I would like fresh cotton. Yes. Okay. You're going to die. So I'm cuddled up on Laura's couch this weekend no way. with a blanket. And I was like, Laura, what kind of detergent do you use? I could just smell this all night. She was like, that, I washed the blankets in Buff City fresh cotton. Are you serious? I'm so not is kidding. Buff City like, it's a chain. chain. A chain. It's a oh, chain. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought yeah. that was a new thing in here in town. Okay. Well, so there you I go. knew I'd like it. I it's like wonderful. this narcissist, but it's a statement. Okay. I feel like. I'm only washing my... Actually, I washed Jacob's clothes in it, so we'll see how that goes. <laughs> he might be like, Mama, I, know. I laugh smell he like a girl. <laughs> Sweatpants that smell floral, but we'll see. And then I got a frother, like oh, a milk frother. That'll be cool. For your... Um, hot beverages and then I got um like dark chocolate items from Trader Joe's so like little dark chocolate mints and dark chocolate covered shortbread cookies and like a little the lady was so cute that had that she was like this has just been such a joy to me all winter to be so fun (laughs) eating these fun snacks yes and she put it in a really really cool like kind of oversized tote bag yeah that i've already used two times awesome. to carry gifts well that's why i picked that one for yeah. you was because i thought well i'll put all her gifts in this yeah. nice tote nice yeah. tote yeah so i got a wine insulated bag oh cool i haven't shown you what i got no you told and me I, you would tell me on the podcast so well, here we are here we go i should be pulling them out of the bag right now but i have this insulated wine tote a brie baker Oh, cool. You know, for yeah. baking for baking brie brie. cheese. Yeah. And what was my third one? Could you bake anything else in it? Or oh, you totally for could. No, okay. You could. But it has the little brie knife uh, for cutting it. Okay. And just the size of it yeah, is like just appropriate for, for, for a wheel, a wheel of, of brie. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, you could bake anything in it. Okay. It's really cute. And then my third thing, oh, a massage gun, which I did not have. That's hilarious. The massage therapist got a massage like gun. Like a mini one? It's or, mini. Because yeah. I've seen those everywhere. The minis? At all sizes. So the like, minis must be in the price point. Because TJ Maxx. You know, I thought they were like Macy's, $80. Belt, they all have the massage guns this year. Mini to, you know, okay. full size. Well. It's popular. I picked that because of the wrapping was so cute. Okay. So, well, it's a good choice. That's, I, <laughs> that's a good one. That's a good one. Well, you did well. Thank you for playing for me. So what I'll tell you, you about do? this show that I saw. Okay. It was not at all Christmassy. Okay. It was here did. in Nashville. Call, it's called Food. It's okay. It's the only word, t- one word title. Okay. But the guy who put it together, it's a one man show. Okay. I guess you say that Jeff. Yeah, that's Jeff. Okay. Sobel? Sobel? Sobel. Sobel. 
Uh, it is so cool. It's coming to Texas next. So if you're... And it's him. Like, it's this him. is the guy. It's he a travels traveling with show. It. Okay. I'm not sure. It, he is out of America. But apparently, in a few cities where this has gone, it was like the hot ticket. Okay. To try to get. Okay. So a friend of ours had an extra ticket mm-hmm. and invited me mm-hmm. to come. And it was one of those things, if I had seen just the brochure yeah, or something, like, I don't think I would have. Okay. It would have caught my attention. Yeah. But it was so cool. So I'm going to do my best to, in a nutshell, describe it. It is part illusion, huh. part storytelling. Okay. Part comedy. Okay. But it all is around where our food comes from. Are you eating during this? You or? don't eat at all. And they have to make that very clear. There okay. is no food okay. eaten at this. Because <laughs> I got invited too and I thought this was a dinner. I'm glad I didn't go. <laughs> well, like she crap. would have sent you the email <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. that gave you further information about it. Okay. But there's, where our food comes from. Okay. And kind of just... The progression of food as we've progressed as a society. Okay. Okay. So I can't even do it justice. But basically, there's this huge square table in the center of a room. Okay. With a white tablecloth on it. Okay. This runner and a candle. Okay. And he's standing at the kind of head of the table. Yeah. So three sides are seated with chairs. Okay. 35 people fit around the table. That's it? That's all that was there? And then otherwise you're in these risers. Oh, okay. Around the room. What was the venue? Where was this at? It was at here. It was called the Oz Art Center in Nashville. And I've only been to it one other time and it was for this really cool artisan craft sale. Okay. Okay. Kind of in West Nashville. Okay. But anyhow, the... um, I'm, I'm not going to, I don't want to give away what all happens oh, and I don't, don't want spoil to it. spoil it. Okay. But it was super cool. Is this? And if you get a chair at the table, yeah. it's interactive. Oh my gosh. More so than if you're surrounding. Yeah. And so. We were at, like, there's plenty of room at the table, so pull up a chair. <laughs> there wasn't. All of those were taken. Yeah, that's true. There's really not plenty of room Because those were the table. hot topic. I mean, the hot item tickets, but. I mean, even the risers looked pretty full to me. That's cool. So, but there was one thing that was kind of fun for me that I will tell. I don't know how he did it, but I'll just tell you that before the show, he's kind of walking around to the 35 that are seated and asking a couple questions and different things like that. So he has this little notebook and he comes up to Jennifer and I, we were together and this friend of mine, and he's like, let's say you're at a diner. Do you know what you would order? And Jennifer was like, absolutely. (laughs) And I was like, I think I know. And he was like, okay, I want each of y'all to write down. And he has two different little notebooks. Okay. Write down what you're going to order. Order. And you keep the paper that you write. Okay. Of what you've written on. So she writes Patty Melt. She told me later what she wrote. I didn't know what she wrote. Yeah. I wrote Turkey Reuben. That's pretty specific. Which is kind of weird, but I do love a turkey, Reuben. Right. I don't really love corned beef. Okay. But I like the a Reuben at a diner. Yeah. yeah. So I wrote turkey, Reuben. So anyway, later in the show, yeah. at one point of the show, he gets to this part where he's talking about an American diner and... Do you, you know what people love to eat at a at a diner? And he has a microphone. He's kind of walking around, and and he's also got a tray, uh-huh. you know, where he looks like he's kind of a waiter in a fine restaurant. And he's asking a couple people, and you know, one guy's like, "Oh, cheeseburger and fries." And that's you know. what I thought y'all were gonna say. Somebody was between you and Jennifer, and someone else is like, "Ah, oh, patty melt, absolutely the patty melt," yeah. you know, and. That's when Jennifer's like, that's what I said. Yeah. Because <laughs> I didn't know what she read. Yeah. When he co- and he's only asked a few people. Right. And then he comes to me and he's like, what are the ingredients of what you would order? And I was like, sauerkraut, rye bread. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking people are going to think, I'm going to just say Reuben. And mm-hmm. I was like, turkey. Mm-hmm. And so a couple of people were like, whoa. <laughs> that was they good. Thought they had it figured out. Well, I was like. Well played. And he, and so he says, ladies and gentlemen, the turkey Reuben. And that's what he had on the platter. 
How in the world did he do that? So, you know, we don't know the hows, but he that wrote it down. Trips me I mean, out. he yeah, he had it there yeah. and he was like, "Take a bite. Is it a turkey reuben?" And I, I mean, it's hot and everything. Are you serious? Yeah. So you did get some food. So I took one bite of <laughs> one bite of the turkey reuben. That's interesting. So it's crazy. And there was lots of things like that that happened. And it's super cool. But anyway, wow. if it comes near you, Texas or whoever. Wow. Food. It's very that interesting. That is very interesting. But deeper than that is it got me thinking of, as you know, I'm a deep thinker. Yeah. So the whole way home and the whole next day, I was thinking about how I haven't put much energy or time or money into creativity Mm -hmm. tickets and things like that lately I haven't done many museums yeah and just how much life that brings me yes and I think it probably does bring life to everyone but maybe it's different for some it's a Broadway show for some it's you know a live bluegrass show yeah whatever I don't know what the specific thing is maybe for someone it's seeing photography yeah But I do think it's important that we don't just get so in the normalcy of paying Mm -hmm. the electric bill and going to the grocery that we don't sometimes find time for beauty and creativity and that's really good innovation and yeah I I even was literally going so far as I was thinking what storytelling what story do I have to tell that could be told in a weird creative way wow. Yes. You know, one of the ones that came to mind is I have said before, when I have read the book of Revelation, it's so strange. Yeah. And so strange. somewhat symbolic, but somewhat literal. Yeah. And I don't even know if my theology is exactly right yeah. about yeah. it all. But I have said before. I wish the guy that started Cirque du Soleil would find Jesus and do a revelation Cirque du Soleil. I think it could be so cool. That would be amazing. Wow, Lainey, that's incredible. That's such a good idea. We had a play at our church this morning as part of the service, which was mostly kids. But it took a lot of writing from an individual in our church and she did so I was so impressed with her creativity. Like the way It's if, a gifting. It is to be able to write songs and teach a, kids to do it. And, I think especially a story that is as familiar as the birth of Jesus. And yes. to show it in some other way. So actually Corey, the the gal that wrote this, wrote this eight years ago. Okay. And has never gotten to put it into, put it into motion. Action. And there is a movie called The Star, which came out six years ago, and it tells the story through animals. It's uh, animated. Yeah, but it's it, darling, it, the whole actually. The point of view of getting to the baby Jesus is through, the, through these animals. Um, that was sort of similar to this, but she was like, I wrote this eight years ago, so, so I actually was before. The star. Yeah, she's like, if you see similarities, I didn't copy. Um, but yeah, so creative when it came to the set and yeah. costumes and, you know, it's just really, really interesting to see how people can be creative because some of the characters even I was like, how are we doing a camel? You know, because I envision a camel having four legs. Uh-huh. You got to gotta be horizontal, <laughs> you know, but they were able to do it with just a little kid. And, you know, they just made the hump and it, with his facial stuff they did he looked like a camel okay just different so different but yeah it is pretty wild to to see all the different it's so cool how people people do things like that i remember seeing the lion the witch and the wardrobe from chronicles of narnia Mm -hmm. and i'm like how are they gonna do a lion that can walk and talk well it was unbelievable how they did it yeah that's what i've heard about the lion king oh yeah just the way that they do the costumes. It's been on Broadway a long time, and I've never seen it. I mean, it's it, traveled. I haven't either, but it might it. have finished its run. Oh, okay. Maybe. I don't know. Don't fact check me on that. Just if you want to go, go. <laughs> well, all of this talk and, and thinking through, I have just, 
you know, at our Christmas brunch, how we get to take an ornament that has a word on it. So my word was beauty. Okay. And I thought, I want to chase some beauty this year. So you want more ticketed events and items. Just seeing art and as best I can. Yeah. Just trying to see some beauty. That can also be going to a park and looking at birds or. True. Yeah. I just, you you do kind of have to be intentional. You do. For those things. You do. Every once in a while, God will just smack you in the face with something that's takes your breath away. Yeah. <laughs> it's almost, yeah, I feel like we're presenting a good sell to why you should have ticket season tickets to like an art museum or like to a performing arts center <laughs> so that you're just already in the ready in to go for the next event. Because, yeah, life happens. So it's hard yeah. to make the time and carve out money for it. Just got to be things. intentional. I'm doing a cookie swap here oh, at the end of the week. Oh, I wish I could join that. Which is super reminiscent of mom and I doing that when I was like in second and third grade. We used to always bring oatmeal cookies. And when we did it, it was a pretty large group. Yeah. And I feel like we had to bring at least six like dozen. Six dozen. I think it was six dozen. So I'm trying to go a little easier on my group. I'm only having everybody bring a half dozen per person that's attending so we only have to do three dozen okay um which is fine but and that's what you leave with they're just a variety yeah you still got to make three dozen cookies that's still the week before christmas can be challenging but anyway so i'm still not sure what what i'm gonna make though well i had a cookie this weekend that was so fabulous i've got to get the recipe but it was a molasses cookie and oh Mm. my gosh those are so good when they're good when they're chewy and not mm-hmm. crunchy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I've had some that I'm like, is this a vanilla wafer? Or yeah, is it's this not a supposed molest- to be. I know. It's got to be chewy. Yeah. So we have um, a thumbprint cookie coming, you know, like the shortbread kind of with the jam. Yeah. We've got chocolate chip. We've got, um, I think, red velvet. Ooh, a cookie um, that's red velvet. Yeah. I My have a good brownie, red velvet brownie recipe. Oh, yeah. I was kind of thinking about maybe those peanut butter blossoms because I felt like that was a nice contrast. You know, the with the Hershey Kiss pressed oh, on yeah, the top. Yeah. It's like I peanut butter I didn't know that's cookie. what that was called. Okay. Um, I don't know. I'll pull out mine to see if there's anything. There's more. so many that are good out there. I really like just a good sugar cookie, too, that's iced. Oh. You yeah. know? Yeah. And I thought maybe that would be fun to have for kids like some sh- ready to go sugar cookies because they'll be kids coming. and let them do let them ice some that's so a cute that idea. might not be like what i make to exchange but i might have some extras you yeah. make four dozen or yeah well you need more than that yeah so we'll see that's cute if you have any good cookie swap recipes send them my way there's just so many i just got overwhelmed i was like i don't know what i'm doing yeah um what else is happening this month it's just about a week till christmas so i can't believe it's yeah this time next week will be Christmas Eve, mm-hmm. Christmas mm-hmm. Yeah. Day. Yeah. So this is our last episode of the season. Yes. 200 and something episodes. We had a um, really good run this year. We did. So ahead of the show, I asked you to look through and figure up what was your favorite episode from season five, meaning 2023. So very curious. Okay, what'd you land on? You know I can't land on just one. Well, Will you let me do my top three or something? I was going to say, do you have a top ten? <laughs> no, I'll, I could. <laughs> but I won't. Okay, give me I'll a I'll narrow few. it down. Okay, there, there, thank you. You probably have them in categories, if I know you. Like, I could. Favorite one that was sentimental? Favorite one that I, I was creative? I could totally do it creative. that way. Okay, just do it however you want. Well... There's one that's super close to my heart, and that was The Loss of a Steel Magnolia. Yes. And that was my friend Catherine Kuntz, who died in the Covenant shooting here in Nashville. And tomorrow's her birthday. Oh. And Christmas is coming, and I have little kisses from her all around the house. The pillow right next to you, that peace pillow, is from her. I have a Christmas book she wrote in, and what she wrote in it is impactful in a different way this year in Chris- for Christmas. It's about just how God makes all things new in the wow. win- after the winter. Wow. Yeah. Whew. 
Um, but that was your idea, actually, to do that episode. And it was quite healing for me to get some thoughts out. Good. And that through that, one of her sisters reached out to me and we got to meet together. And that she also was very healing. She found the episode. Like yes. she didn't know us. We probably said hello to her at the funeral, but yeah. I mean, amongst thousands amongst that were thousands. there. So. I was a little jarred when yeah. we got that email from her sister because I was nervous that, oh, gosh, was it not good? Did yeah. she, she wants to take it down? Like, yeah. And it was so was wonderful really grateful. for her. Yeah. And so yeah. that has to be at the top of my list because of just how impactful that whole thing has been all year through for yes. me. Yes. Yes. I'm glad we did it. That was very uh, outside of the box for us. Yeah. To go somewhere like we're, we try and be real but that yeah. was very personal and it's um, hard to put an uplifting twist on something that's horrific like that but she's a steel magnolia so yeah it fit in yeah. that way yeah yeah and yeah. another one that was very impactful for me because I learned things I didn't even know was with the loss of Jimmy Buffett Yes, but we did the episode before that. I know. So I was so grateful that we weren't doing a Jimmy tribute. B- Buffett tribute. It yes. was literally like, man, this is a Southerner who's made a huge impact. I didn't even know he was sick. I didn't either. I don't even know. I don't think we said a lot that. Of, and maybe. I don't think a lot of people knew that. Yeah. Either. Yeah. Because he had had to cancel some events, but we didn't know that that's why. Yeah. I think he just had to cancel an event in Charleston or something yes. when and we had the episode. We may have mentioned that, yeah. But we didn't know the why. No. And so, yeah, he was just so impactful. And I was so impressed with the philanthropy side of his Parrot Head Clubs. Yes. That are, well, he's not the one behind those, but yeah. yet he is. Yes. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, he's the reason. He's the reason, for sure. So, those are two of my favorites those are good ones this year and i love to explore new places so it's really fun to see some of these towns i'd never been to decatur georgia or thomas decatur, i mean alabama. decatur alabama yeah. or thomasville georgia we yeah did some fun towns yeah and could have done even more but we just can't be everywhere so <laughs> no. you know like i'm thinking about the Christmas trees of Western North Carolina. Oh, wouldn't it have been fun? I would love to, have to been go interview some or, of those. Yeah, yeah, recording there. But yeah, we do get get we do did the best get we to can. Go to some really fun places. We could have done a whole tour of my favorite my favorite episode, which was the college towns of the South. Oh. I just love a college town. I love talking about college football on this show. We've done. <laughs> the college football traditions then we did like a re-release of that and so we were like, i've had well, a couple people talk about our energy while we're talking yeah. about college football yeah. and yeah. that kind of thing and i'm like well that's just real it's, we don't cook it up it's so and we had not been to a lot of those college towns but we knew that they were you know important enough in terms of southern culture that we had to talk about them so that was definitely a favorite episode and this one the next one that was also a favorite was just unusual in terms of what I think people would think of when they think of Southern culture. But I love that we had a good angle to bring to it because it was totally us. And that was our Southern Revivals Oh yeah, episode. Yep. I had a lot of fun with that because I love history of yes. spiritual heritage and revival history. And there's been such good stuff that has happened through Kentucky and Tennessee and just all kinds of wonderful history there going back to like 1800s and that's awesome but I th- I felt like that was creative so creative I don't ever see garden and gun or southern living or talking any about southern something blogs. like that yeah so anyway I thought that one was that fun. was a great one I actually thought you might say our episode the southern Jewish table where we interviewed a couple of women with the renewed cookbook that was cool too that was really cool. Yeah. They actually reached out to us, and I was like, oh, I feel so known. Like, how did they know that we that would we like this? Jewish people in yeah. Israel. And, and then I've thought about them with all Me that's too. going on in the Middle East. And so if they happen to hear us, I have uh, been praying a lot about yeah. that situation. So Yes. We want to see Israel victorious and just 
so many people healed in that whole region. Yeah, and just eyes opened yeah. to what's God's truth in yeah. both sides of that conflict. So anyway, I feel what like a great there, year we've had. I feel like Kugels and Collards, which was the name of that cookbook, I feel like it recently got picked to be on a pretty good end of year list from somebody. Oh, now, cool. I can't remember. It might have been Garden and Gun. I can't remember who, but... I was proud of them because that's cool. There's a lot of books that come out in a year. Oh my so gosh! Even a, in a lot of cookbooks. Yeah, if you make a top ten list on any kind, you're doing really, really well. So, well, it's been a fun season, yes. and we're ready for a little winter break. But yes. um, we'll be back with lots of yes. new fun content, and my wheels have been turning about some new things so yeah we typically try and have a little brainstorming session at the top of the year and figure out are we still who we thought we are and do we yeah. need to tweak anything or do anything different so yeah it's been really fun this year we've had some sponsors come on board and that's helped us to cover some costs and sustain some financial things and we hope that's to- all a real side to doing things yeah we hope to continue to grow that as well. So, um, yeah, keep us in your prayers as we navigate the future for the show. And, man, we just hope that this is a really, really, really sweet week or two for you, yeah. and for people around you, whether that be neighbors or family or friends or your dog or your cat. However you're surrounded, Lord, I just slow down good. and savor all that this season has to offer yes so much hope there is hope there is hope okay with that laney peace be with you i've got my sweatshirt on peace be with y'all